So today I'm going to continue on with my well, with the video I did yesterday, which was on the end of slave trade, and today I'm going to do a video on slavery itself, the abolition of slavery um, in Britain. Because it happened a few years before it did in the United States, and it was still, I mean, it was quite significant. And yeah, like, I can't, like, not talk about it because having a YouTube channel, I can't talk about, I can't not talk about, you know, the abolition of slavery. So, what I'm going to talk about is the, mainly the slavery abolition law, which was passed on the 28th of August of 1833. And this is literally life-changing, I'm not, like, literally life-changing. And, well, of course, it wasn't exactly an easy act to get past because slavery was this well-established conflict, um, conflict, um, concept had been going on for so many years, like centuries even, and and they finally managed to form like on paper abolish it, and this was around, you know. Um, 26, yeah, 26 years after slave trade itself was abolished and the struggle, the fight that people had to go through to actually get this passed was, like, I mean, it's incredible. And, well, like I mentioned, the slave trade was itself banned in 1907, but the practice of the slavery, slavery wasn't. And so in the Caribbean, in colonies, in Britain itself, it was still common practice because, yeah, you can purchase slaves, you can trade them or anything, you could still have them, there was nothing saying that you couldn't have slaves, so why shouldn't you? And, well, Britain, and the British economy really had been built on slavery since definitely the 17th century, the later part maybe in the 16th. I mean, trading sugar, trading cotton, trading, you know, many products, because the British Empire <laughs> was quite significant, and it wasn't what it would become. It was still quite young, relatively speaking, you know, it was still huge, but, you know. Um, well, it relied on this manual free labor of slaves. And this concept of abolishing slavery was kind of wild and radical at the time. So it it wasn't it wasn't just oh yeah human rights. At the time they needed to convince those in power that human rights were more important than money. Which is a hard thing to convince people who are set on the idea that money is the most important thing in the world and everything comes after that. Now, I mentioned this in the last video, but if you know anything about history, and, well, it's literally common knowledge, the later half of the 18th century was crazy. Literally crazy. There were so many revolutions. You have the, well, I talked about yesterday, the revolution in Haiti, you have the American Revolution, which directly affected Britain. The French Revolution. It was a time of social change. And the, you know, completely switching up the so social orders. And everything was turning upside down. For better or for worse, depending on what side of history you're on. And, well, you have these ideas in the American Revolution of life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. That's Thomas Jefferson. Um, all were not created equal. And yeah, Thomas Jefferson, despite him owning slaves. Um, you have in the French Revolution, the, the overthrowing the wealthy, the to the, for the rise of, of the you know bourgeois class. Um, you have this idea of. Equality, um, yeah, humanity, social rights, yeah, 
and well for this time even prior to the revolution and from the moment slavery was a well-established conflict as concept sorry i keep on saying conflict concept and even when the first like instances of slavery were noted there was obviously going to be opposition to it and well in may 1772 when this is notably three years before the american revolution even starts this judgment court judgment by judge no judge by lord mansfield uh, in the case of this one enslaved african named james somerset and this customs officer named charles stewart nothing to do with um the royal family i think the king at the time was george the third a lot of social change took place under george the third of course the um the slavery abolition act that was passed under george the fourth but the American revolution and the abolishment of the slave trade well was under george the third well this slave somerset he had managed to I mean, he had been bought in Boston, back then a colony, and the main port, like the main point where the American Revolution started, and transported all the way to England, and there he escaped. He didn't really get far, and was later caught and sent to Jamaica, but he escaped. Three people. named um, John Marlowe, Thomas Walken, and Elizabeth Cade, they went up to the courts and said, is this actually a legitimate reason to be, for him to be detained? He was taken from his, from his home, sold, not even taken away, sold as an object. He escaped and is imprisoned again and sent to Jamaica. Is this, is this fair? Um, Lord Bansfield uh, decided in May 1772 that slaves, uh, slaves, slaves could not be transported from England against their will. If they wanted to leave England, they should be able to do so by their own free will. If they didn't want to, they shouldn't have to be forced to, to move. And... Well, this, this ruling, this court saying that you shouldn't be able to force people to go to, to go to leave England um, didn't exactly mean complete abolition of slavery, as you can probably tell. Um, well, people who um supported Somerset, the, the slave, they thought that those laws in the colonies didn't exactly were they didn't go hand in hand with those in Parliament. And so slavery in the colonies and the practice of taking someone from England and onto a colony wasn't wasn't right, wasn't unlawful. And they based their big part of their case on that idea not on um not in terms of abolition it was still a huge step don't get me wrong but it was not the ultimate goal it wasn't it didn't i mean it did set a pace but it didn't uh mean a, you know, it didn't get abolition because it still continued just in 1772 Slavery would not be abolished for another 60, 61 years. Well, this case uh, ended up you know, getting quite a lot of attention. And understandably, at the time, something like this would have... If there was internet uh, back then, it would have broken the internet. This movement, this like, idea ended up forming a movement in 1783. And... Well, these groups, anti 
the reviews managed to get new legislation passed in Canada by loyalists to America around 1793, which was huge. It was one of the first, if not the first, piece of formal anti-slavery uh, legislation in the whole British Empire. And it wasn't even done in Britain, it was done in Canada. But still, like, it's still something. Well, you know, I've, I did mention uh, William Wilberforce. William Wilberforce in the last like, video. He was literally a hero in this, in this sense, and the guy, I mean, he did manage to pass legislation that eventually led to, you know, the abolishment of the slave trade. Well, he was extremely prominent and did a huge thing for, you know, equality and human rights and ended up getting, you know, supporters like Hannah Moore and Granville Sharp and formed the Anti-Slavery Society. I'm gonna name some, some names that you may or may not know. These people were later on referred to as saints. James Elliot, Zachary Macaulay, and Henry Thornton. And, well, this was no like these people were known as the as the class on set, and Wilberforce was the leader. He was the main guy. On March the thirteenth of March, seventeen eighty seven, well, this on set they sect they had a dinner and they decided that Wilberforce would eventually he was an MP and he would bring this matter into Parliament. And I think it's absolutely ridiculous that Wilberforce was absolutely, was just one of the few white people to actually campaign for slaves' rights. Well, Wilberforce, I said this last video, he gave a lot of speeches, campaigned extremely hard, and actually managed to pass legislation, but Parliament kept on stalling and, you know, pushing things back. And, well, he did manage to pass the, um, the Slave Trade Act in 1807. If you want more on that, you can pause yesterday's video. So, this did was really, like, make it illegal and impose fines. And it wasn't a felony though. It was not allowed. But then in eighteen in eighteen eleven, just four years after, it was originally made a, a felony. Then, the, the Royal Navy was actually allowed to you know interfere and make sure this was being put in place. And between eighteen oh eight and eighteen sixty. 1808 to 1860, they managed to free 150,000 Africans bound for enslavement. 150,000 compared to the 3,400,000 officially sold into slavery from 1669 to 1807 is nothing. But it's still, it's still 150,000 more. That number could have been 3,000,000. 500, even 600. It's small, but it's something. And, well, one thing you don't really, I kind of touched upon it yesterday, but people who had been previously enslaved and managed to free themselves, they also kind of helped, not really, but kind of, the whole slavery practice because in order to make a profit after you know after being freed best way to do so sell slave made products 
and by you know creating supply you created demand and yeah so this is actually known as the age of reason and it was once by the enlightenment that had happened a few years before and well and this age of reason brought about the French Revolution. That's more of a social order rather than human rights one. But oh, kind of. Wait. Um, but you also have the Haiti Revolution, head, headed by Toussaint Louverture. Sorry for my pronunciation. Then that was in eighteen. I forgot the year. Oh, I've. It's yeah. I did a video on this yesterday. You can watch that. Also, in 1816 in Barbados, Demira in 1822, Jamaica in 1831. Yeah, so, about Jamaica, this was known as the Baptist War, and it was led by, what well, was led by, it actually started as, an, as a peaceful protest, peaceful strike. And it's actually baffling how many of these social changes started with peaceful protest. Um, it was started by this Baptist minister called Samuel Sharp and well if you followed if you followed the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter movement from 2020 and from literally any other time of history uh, you'll know how you can kind of guess how it went. Peaceful strike? Met with violence. And people died, people lost their property because of brutality, nothing else, just brutality. And Parliament, it, was, it got so brutal that Parliament actually had to hold inquiries that would shape the Slavery Abolition Act passed two years after this. And well, the anti slavery society kept on meeting and kept on spreading word with you know, like their members and spreading awareness. Well, well before us, right, just at the forefront. Then on the 26th of July of 1833, well, legislation was on the cusp of being passed. It was like right there. It was so close. But William Wilberforce died three days after that, on the 29th of July, 1833. So he didn't actually get to see the Slavery Abolition Act pass, being passed, or even put in place, but he did set the wheels. And without him, who knows? This act successfully managed to abolish Yeah, slavery successfully managed to abolish slavery in um, British colonies, which just resulted in 800,000 slaves being freed in the Caribbean and South Africa and Canada. Um, I mean, it all started on the 26th of July, 1833, and ended on the 1st of August, 1834. And, well, what it did was in theory, um, get these slaves and slowly, you know, adapt them into more people able to join society. And like apprenticeships, not orchards, but you know, just apprenticeships mainly. This was brought to an end in 1840. So, um, territories <laughs> in the possession of the East India Company, one of the most evil companies in the history of history, or Celia or St. Helena for that matter, um, well, these territories didn't implement these policies. These uh, conditions were lifted in 1843 and a longer process started to try and, you know, compensate people. But how do you compensate that? How do you say, oh, we're sorry, here's money? 
after decades and centuries of slavery, how do you even say, I'm sorry? You can't. Well, the British government thought, hey, let's spend 20 million pounds and let's see if we can actually do this. And I pay for their losses, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But, I mean, it got them up for in society, but that doesn't solve it. It's just paying them off. And, well, this was passed in August 33, and then in, by, well, by August 38, a whole emancipation was, was achieved. Well, this is what an era of change and development and yada yada and kind of inspired, I guess, the movement of, well, not, not inspired, but accelerated the movement of emancipation in, in the States with the Civil War breaking out in 1861, just 23 years after this happened, and emancipation being achieved in 1865. Two years after that happened. But yeah. I just, I just find it ridiculous that the British government thought, 20 million pounds? Hey, we're sorry for slavery. Here you go. No amount of money can compensate for that. Literally no amount. How do you even apologize for it? It's just ridiculous. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it there because there's so much else to say. Um, yeah, I probably do like because the topic of slavery is extremely important, and I don't think I've talked about it much. I did a video on the apartheid, but that's not nearly enough. So I'm probably gonna do a bit on the civil war. American Civil War and Emancipation and like because you can't really talk about you can't be a YouTube channel without talking about that. I'm gonna leave it there so I hope you liked it. I hope you found it interesting and yeah, thank you for watching. Bye!